Those who think of other planes at all consider them remote, distant realms, but planar influence can be felt throughout the world. It sometimes manifests in beings who, through an accident of birth, carry the powers of the planes in their blood. The Janasi are one such people, the offspring of genies and mortals. The elemental planes are often inhospitable to natives of the material plane, crushing earth, searing flames, boundless skies and endless seas make visiting these places dangerous for even a short time. The powerful genies, however, don't face such troubles when venturing into the mortal world. They adapt well to the mingled elements of the material plane and they sometimes visit, whether of their own volition or compelled by magic. Some genies can adopt mortal guise and travel incognito. During these visits, a mortal might catch a genie's eye. Friendship forms, romance blooms, and sometimes children result. These children are Janasi, individuals with ties to two worlds, yet belonging to neither. Some Janasi are born of mortal genie unions. Others have two Janasi as parents, and a rare few have a genie further up their family tree manifesting an elemental heritage that's lain dormant for generations. Occasionally, Janasi result from exposure to a surge of elemental power through phenomena such as an eruption from the inner planes or a planar convergence. Elemental energy saturates any creatures in the area and might alter their nature enough that their offspring with other mortals are born as Janasi. Heirs to Elemental Power Janasi inherit something from both sides of their dual nature. They resemble humans but have unusual skin color, red, green, blue, or gray. And there is something odd about them. The elemental blood flowing through their veins manifests differently in each Janasi, often as a magical power. Seen in silhouette, a Janasi can usually pass for human. Those of earth or water descent tend to be heavier while those of air or fire tend to be lighter. A given Janasi might have some features reminiscent of the mortal parent, pointed ears from an elf, a stockier frame and thick hair from a dwarf, small hands and feet from a halfling, exceedingly large eyes from a gnome, and so on. Janasi almost never have contact with their elemental parents. Genies seldom have interest in their mortal offspring, seeing them as accidents. Many feel nothing for their Janasi children at all. Some Janasi live as outcasts, driven into exile for their unsettling appearance and strange magic, or assuming leadership of savage humanoids and weird cults in untamed lands. Others gain position of great influence, especially where elemental beings are revered. A few Janasi leave the material plane to find refuge in the households of their genie parents. Wild and Confident Janasi rarely lack confidence, seeing themselves as equal to almost any challenge in their path. This certainty might manifest as graceful self-assurance in one Janasi and as arrogance in another. Such self-confidence can sometimes blind Janasi to risk, and their great plans often get them and others into trouble. Too much failure can chip away at even a Janasi's sense of self, so they constantly push themselves to improve, honing their talents and perfecting their craft. Janasi Lands As rare beings, Janasi might go their entire lives without encountering another one of their kind. There are no great Janasi cities or empires. Janasi seldom have communities of their own and typically adopt the cultures and societies into which they are born. The more strange their appearance, the harder time they have. Many Janasi lose themselves in teeming cities where their distinctiveness hardly raises an eyebrow in places accustomed to a variety of different people. Those living on the frontier, though, have a much harder time. People there tend to be less accepting of differences. Sometimes a cold shoulder and a suspicious glare are the best Janasi can hope for. In more backward places, they face ostracism and even violence from people who mistake them for fiends. Facing a hard life, 
these Janasi seek isolation in the wilds, making their homes in mountains or forests, near lakes or underground. Most air and fire Janasi in the realms are descendants of the Jinn and Efrit who once ruled Kalimshan. When those rulers were overthrown, their plain touched children were scattered. Over thousands of years, the bloodlines of those Janasi have spread into other lands. Though far from common, air and fire Janasi are most likely to be found in the western regions of Faerun, along the coast from Kalimshan north up to the Sword Coast and into the western heartlands to the east. Some remain in their ancient homeland. In contrast, water and earth Janasi have no common history. Individuals have difficulty tracing their own lineage and bloodlines occasionally skip a generation or two. Many earth Janasi originated in the north and spread out from there. Water Janasi come from coastal areas, the largest concentration of them hailing from the regions surrounding the Sea of Fallen Stars. The distant land of Zakhara is known only in legends to most inhabitants of Faerun. There, genies and spellcasters enter into bargains and Janasi can result from such pacts. Those Janasi have been sources of great will and woe in the history of that land. Janasi Names Janasi use the naming conventions of the people among whom they were raised. They might later assume distinctive names to capture their heritage, such as Flame, Ember, Wave, or Onyx. Four major subraces of Janasi are found among the worlds of D&D, Air Janasi, Earth Janasi, Fire Janasi, and Water Janasi. Janasi Traits Your Janasi character has certain characteristics in common with all other Janasi. You can speak, read, and write common and primordial. Primordial is a guttural language filled with harsh syllables and hard consonants. Ability score your constitution score increases by two. Janasi mature at about the same rate as humans and reach adulthood in their late teens. They live somewhat longer than humans do, up to 120 years. Independent and self-reliant, Janasi tend toward a neutral alignment. Janasi are as varied as their mortal parents, but are generally built like humans, standing anywhere from five to over six feet tall. Your size is medium. Your base walking speed is 30 feet. Air Janasi As an Air Janasi, you are descended from the Jinn. As changeable as the weather, your moods shift from calm to wild and violent with little warning, but these storms rarely last long. Air Janasi typically have light blue skin, hair, and eyes. A faint but constant breeze accompanies them, tousling their hair and stirring the clothing. Some Air Janasi speak with breathy voices, marked by a faint echo. A few display odd patterns in their flesh or grow crystals from their scalps. Ability score increase, your dexterity score increases by one. Unending breath, you can hold your breath indefinitely while you're not incapacitated. Mingle with the wind, you can cast the levitate spell once with this trait requiring no material components, and you regain the ability to cast it this way when you finish a long rest. Constitution is your spellcasting ability for this spell. Earth Janasi As an Earth Janasi, you are descended from the cruel and greedy Deo, though you aren't necessarily evil. You have inherited some measure of control over Earth, revealing in superior strength and solid power. You tend to avoid rash decisions, pausing long enough to consider your options before taking action. Elemental Earth manifests differently from one individual to the next. Some Earth Janasi always have bits of dust falling from their bodies and mud clinging to their clothes, never getting clean no matter how often they bathe. Others are as shiny and polished as gemstones, with skin tones of deep brown or black, eyes sparkling as agates. Earth Janasi can also have smooth metallic flesh, dull iron skin spotted with rust, a pebbled and rough hide, or even a coating of tiny embedded crystals. The most arresting have fissures in their flesh from which faint light shines. Ability score increase. Your strength score increases by one. Earth walk. You can move across difficult terrain made of earth or stone without expending extra movement. Merge with stone. 
You can cast the Pass Without Trace spell once with this trait, requiring no material components, and you regain the ability to cast it this way when you finish a long rest. Constitution is your spellcasting ability for this spell. Fire Genasi As a Fire Genasi, you have inherited the volatile mood and keen mind of the Efreet. You tend toward more impatience in making snap judgments. Rather than hide your distinctive appearance, you exult in it. Nearly all fire genasi are feverishly hot, as if burning inside. An impression reinforced by flaming red, coal black, or ash gray skin tones. The more human looking have fiery red hair that writhes under extreme emotion, while more exotic specimens sport actual flames dancing on their heads. Fire genasi voices might sound something like crackling flames, and their eyes flare when angered. Some are accompanied by the faint scent of brimstone. Ability score increase. Your intelligence score increases by one. Dark vision. You can see in dim light within 60 feet of you as if it were bright light, and in darkness as if it were dim light. Your ties to the elemental plane of fire make your dark vision unusual. Everything you see in darkness is in a shade of red. Fire Resistance You have resistance to fire damage. Reach to the Blaze You know the Produce Flame cantrip. Once you reach third level, you can cast the Burning Hand spell once with this trait as a first level spell, and you regain the ability to cast it this way when you finish a long rest. Constitution is your spellcasting ability with these spells. Water Genasi The lapping of waves, the spray of sea foam on the wind, the ocean depths, all of these things call to your heart. You wander freely and take pride in your independence, though others might consider you selfish. Most Water Genasi look as if they just finished bathing, with beads of moisture collecting on their skin and hair. They smell of fresh rain and clean water. Blue or green skin is common, and most have somewhat overlarge eyes, blue-black in color. A water genasi's hair might float freely, swaying and waving as if underwater. Some have voices with undertones reminiscent of well song or trickling streams. Ability score. Your wisdom score increases by one. Acid resistance. You have resistance to acid damage. Amphibious. You can breathe air and water. Swim. You have a swimming speed of 30 feet. Call to the wave. You know the shape water cantrip. When you reach third level, you can cast the create or destroy water spell as a second level spell once with this trait. And you regain the ability to cast it this way when you finish a long rest. Constitution is your spell casting ability for these spells. Download these images and more at GreenLionRPG.com or Patreon.